We are using Twin Motion 2025.2. There are a few things you need to keep in mind because some updates have been bring to the configuration options, the configuration uh, feature that we have within Twin Motion. Okay, let's first talk about what changed in terms of triggers. You know that triggers are these kind of buttons that appear on the screen. And once we click, something changes between one state and the other. Well, we have some new buttons in the user interface that will allow us to make some change to them. First thing is that now we can not only use a 2D trigger or a 3D trigger, which is the button in the scene, but also a 3D object as a trigger. In that case, for instance, I could here select an object, pick trigger object, And we select the floor, and now the floor is our trigger. Nothing is happening because we have not configured something at the moment, but as you can see, the mouse changes as soon as it is hovering or it's on top the object that we have selected. So this is a new type of trigger that we can use. Also, when we use a 3D trigger, it will now appear on the screen even if we quit the media mode. This is very useful. In, uh, especially if you're moving objects, if we are reorganizing our scene and also to keep in mind where this trigger is and it will also appear inside the, the scene graph at all time even if we are not in the multimedia mode. In the case you are using 2D trigger, there are new options too. If you click on this small wheel icon, you will see this new global settings menu. It will allow you to change where this button is displayed and how. It can now be on the top part of our viewport, the bottom or the top, and we can create an offset that will even allow us to move this element to the middle of our resine. Something that might be lacking is a control that could allow us to offset in the other axis, but well, maybe in our next update we have this, okay? We can also change the opacity of all the 2D triggers at the same time. If we had many triggers, we will need to manually select them all and change the setting for all of them separately. But now we can do it on a global setting here. We can also change the color. You see the old and the new color and it changes for all of them at the same time. We can change its size for all of them and the list size with you remind if we have different elements added now we also have the ability to control the size of the elements that belong to this to the list and we can even disable or enable the sound in case you don't like how this sounds okay let's return this all back to how it was i'm not sure what was the default value here let's leave this to something like 20 Maybe. No, it's too small. Let's leave it like this for now. Let's return this to white. Something like that. And okay. There are also other options that have been added and that are not related to these triggers. And those are that we can now add transform and camera position controls for our configurator. We can create variations depending on these two elements. Let's create a configurator to show you how this camera position element will do work. It's very easy. It will work as you might expect. You only need to position your camera, save it. Now we can go up here and save a new camera we can go to the other corner and create a third camera and now we can switch between cameras this was lacking in the configuration options and it's really really helpful we really needed this option because this is super helpful when you're creating configurators of a scene or product rendering to show different views of the space or 
of the object. Something that's also important here is this option, because it will allow you to recapture all the state's thumbnails in just one click. Look, if I click on it, now we have a thumbnail for all of the different elements automatically. And there's also a new option in here that allow you, if you notice, every time I created a new capture a new state, no thumbnails was being added. We can click here, out to capture on, and now every time I create a new state, the thumbnail is automatically taken from the viewport position. You need to keep this in mind too. Something else related to the camera views is that if we also enable the ambient setting, let's do this for this third camera, we can also create variation depending on the ambient settings too. And this is important because in the ambience category, we have the camera tab, the camera category, and we can control all of these settings and variate them for each of the camera views. This is really, really helpful. Like for instance, I want to have a field of view completely different for this third camera. Look at it, 119. And if we switch to another camera and we check the field of view, it is 90. Here it is. This is really, really helpful. But you need to make sure that the ambience element is also enabled because if you make any change to that camera setting, it will not be saved just by the camera position. Okay. And lastly, very importantly, there is another element added here to the list that we can configure. Let's create and um, let me switch back to the previous view and let's create a new configuration. And we can also now change the position, the rotation and the scale of objects within our resin using this transform element. Make sure it is enabled. And now we can, for instance, create a, a variation with elements as they are now. Or we could move this here, move this around here, rotate it, scale this a bit, create a new one. And now if we click on the trigger, here we have it. We are moving our objects, scaling them, rotating them, all those transformation controls we talked about uh, before are being variated by the different states that we have. In the past, we needed to, uh, if we want to move, move something to a different position, we, we needed to duplicate the objects, hide a set of them, and unhide the other set arranged in a different position. But now this is not needed. We can just click on this trigger, and objects will adapt to the settings that we set to the different uh, states. And um, that's all with the, the, the elements. Uh, have been added to the configurations. They are really helpful. And in case you're interested in having more of these images, more or these icons for your configurator, we have a whole set of them. You can find the link in the description down below and in the comments. It's only five dollars, and you will get a bunch of them in different styles that you can start implementing within your projects.